Hello, my name is Sean Bischoff. I'm the general manager for Triumph. Uh, you're watching the very first episode of our brand new show, our brand new podcast called Together. You know, Triumph, we have been a champion uh, in, in Call of Duty. We've played in Pro League and Counter-Strike. Um, we've attacked all sorts of media, but we never started a podcast. And, uh, you know, in my career the last few years, um, you know, as a professional manager, managing teams across the country, uh, managing championship winning teams, I've met a lot of people in my life that I found to be very, very interesting. Um, people that have interesting perspectives um, people that have cool stories to share. And I feel like, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to start this show and one of the reasons why Triumph is hosting this podcast is to have a platform for people to share their stories and share their interesting uh, ideas and perspectives and get them all out there. I believe that if we want to see our esports industry grow, we need to do so together. And so without further ado, I want to get into the show today because we have a guest. And our very first guest is a, a friend of mine, somebody I've known for quite a while. You know, uh, I think he's got quite a story to share. Uh, he is uh, a renaissance man of sorts, as well as an avid fan of really terrible dad jokes. So, without any further ado, let's get into it, man. Christian, how are you, brother? I'm doing, I'm doing fantastic. I'm so excited to be here and, you know, talking with you. I mean, we've known each other probably for, I think, three or four years now. Kind of uh, grew into the space together. Um, you obviously, you know, before we met, were you know running tri uh, bye week, you know, and that's still. I'm still waiting for the day you bring bye week back. I, I think we can. I think. I think it's the time. I think it's the time. Yeah. I have access, dude. We can make it happen. You and I. <laughs> I <laughs> thought you deleted the Twitter. Oh, it's still there. No, okay, I have cool. it. I have it. <laughs> um, All 500 followers, brother. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my name is Christian Gillespie, aka Puns and Buns. I'm the social media manager and marketing manager for Nerd Street Gamers. Um, just to give you a little bit of my history, I started out in esports, uh, building my own company called Universal Gaming League. It was in uh, South Jersey. And we wanted to build a really awesome production company and, you know, tournament organizer that would, you know, provide land events for people in our area. And then um, one Google search later after getting an LLC, I found Nerd Street Gamers and felt kind of silly. So, you know, we went over there, did some events with them and did some work with them. And, um, you know, from there, I got really lucky um, because I loved Overwatch. Overwatch was my passion at the time. And as I'm working with them, the Philadelphia Fusion were announced. So... They were working hand in hand with Nerd Street. I got a lot of awesome opportunities to work with the Fusion from helping observe for the Hometown Hero Showcase to being able to cast on on for the homecoming game between NYXL and Fusion with uh, Uber was, you know, a highlight of my of my time. And, you know, Nerd Street gave me so many different opportunities. I traveled the U.S. with them as a contractor. And, you know, after two rejected uh, job applications, uh, I finally, you know, found my my pace in social media and i you know i ran into my director at a smash event i went up and i said hey Paige, you know my name is christian i'm going to be your next social media man, uh, coordinator applicant and you know there there i was in the professional world and then on the other side of things i was uh you know still getting involved on the team side i was uh, i ran i was the manager for a team called powerhouse it was my buddy's org um it was owned by intero who's a siege caster um, and from there, you know, I moved on to Mirage to build a land team to compete in a land that didn't happen. So we built it with all East Coast warlords. Um, that's a that's a great callback to a to an amazing style of gameplay in Overwatch. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's amazing. Even though we built it with the restriction of keeping it to the East Coast and people who can travel to, uh, to a land in Philly, um, we ended up winning Open Division that year. And that's uh, that's where I met Rusto. He was uh, he was with us towards the uh, towards the end of that leg of journey uh, after we got a new manager and. Honestly, you know, it was it was awesome. We we transitioned. He went from manager to GM. I went from GM to community coordinator. And, you know, I was doing social media work. And that's where I found my passion for social media. So we built Bermuda together. And from Bermuda, we separated. I went to Simplicity. He uh, moved on to uh, Triumph. And, you know, I found my stride in social media and he found his stride in being an amazing general manager and, you know, working with players and helping them develop. Yeah, man. So, uh, you know, you have such like a long history and just just in like the few years that you've been in esports, you know, you're one of those people that, uh, like I called you, like sort of a renaissance man that I find that you've been in a lot of positions and our paths always cross, you know what I mean? Like I would consider you a friend in the scene, but it's it's basically because it's like every 
every turn that I take in my career, you end up like crossing my path. Like we always like run into each other, whether you're casting matches, you're running tournaments, you know, like you, you do a little bit of everything. And uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the first episode and why I wanted to talk to you on the show is that I think you have a lot of cool perspectives because you've done so many different jobs in esports in the last few years, you know, um, you know, I have a lot of respect for your work ethic. And that's another reason why I wanted to talk to you. Um, and so now, you know, you it looks like you've fallen into a, a role that you really are passionate about in social media management uh, and, and marketing specifically for Nerd Street. Another reason why uh, I'm happy to have you is I have a lot of respect for Nerd Street. Um, I have a lot of interest in what they're doing, man. I think Nerd Street's doing a lot of really cool stuff. And um, yeah, man, I, I'm glad to have you. I wanted to ask you um, just to start off the conversation uh, this week. So, so we're recording this on Saturday. This is probably going to come out on Tuesday, I believe. Um, not to date it, but you know, it's just important to kind of say because I think you guys have another tournament coming up in the next couple of days. But this past week, you guys ran the open qualifier for First Strike for Valorant, correct? Yeah, we um we we were op we are the first uh part of the open qualifiers for Valorant Riot. Um you know, they they put it out there that you know they were going to do two open qualifiers to allow teams to compete for a chance to be in the first strike event um, before this was the ignition series, which was a series of partnered, um, you know, events that weren't necessarily a part of any, you know, path or sponsor, you know, like there wasn't any prize pool injection from uh, riot to my knowledge um, with the exception of their doing, you know, they, they, Put in some of the prize pool for FTW, but this is the first hundred thousand dollar tournament. Only eight teams are going to be allowed. Uh, four teams from our our qualifiers, four teams from the UMG qualifiers. So for us, we ran a um, hundred and twenty eight team bracket single elimination this week. Um, any any team with players that uh, were immortal one or better within, I believe, Act 2 or Act 3 were able to compete. And it led to, you know, really, really close competition. Um, I've been, you know, like I said, I've, we, we've been doing Valorant since, you know, the beta. We, we ran the first yeah. beta tournament. I actually casted the first T1 qualifier event, which was um, until, like, I was, I, it was a 15-hour day because of the first time we ever did a format like that. And it was, yeah, I remember. <laughs> I, it was, I was, I remember being on that cast and that was a, uh, we, we we were dying we were we were definitely like at, at the end of the night it was rough um but you know we, we've been doing this since the beta so being able to watch the players grow and seeing like people translate into the scene this is the first time i've ever been in the beginning of a scene and not only just being in there as a fan or as a spectator being there as the operator so the first strike open qualifiers um i have to give a shout out to sean powell who is our you know our tournament operations director he um he's a very passionate individual he he spends long hours developing these events developing these tournaments he comes from being a player he was a player in csgo he's been operating in csgo he, you know, if there's anybody who's passionate about making sure that player integrity and comp competitive integrity exists, it's Sean Powell. And he is the reason why our qualifiers and all of our Valorant tournaments are so, you know, well received. And, you know, he he takes feedback very seriously. And, you know, I can't give him enough props. He's he's an individual that we're going to see really move on into the industry. And I think we'll, he'll be running uh, a pro league one day. He'll be the I can see him as a commissioner of a, of, of one of the games pro leagues if it's valorant mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be the happiest person in the world <laughs> yeah I, i've got to say well that that might not be too far off the table to be honest i mean let's let's maybe let's speak it into existence for him you know <laughs> I, I uh i've got to say you know nerd street in general like the the work the nerd street's done just in the last six months and it, i mean the work that nerd street was doing before covid um was was awesome and 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 i think uh you know you guys were always on the right path and this company nerd street was always on the right path even before puns and buns joined um, but definitely like the work that you guys have done in the last few months has been pretty remarkable. And, um, you know, when, when Valorant first came out, you guys were the first people I remember like coming out with big tournaments and, and, and like you said, hosting the first T1 invitational and things of that nature. And, uh, it's been really cool, man. How did, how did you feel about, um, the tournament this week do you think it went pretty smoothly and like how, how do you feel about it it, it seemed pretty yeah. successful to me yeah i mean like i said it was it it, it was a 128 team tournament it felt like it was an eight team local like it that's how smooth it, it operated um obviously some hiccups along the way uh riot you know released a patch and then, then uh rescinded it um for the sake of competitive integrity which was you know an amazing thing for a publisher to do because that's no small feat to uh to move off of their you know their publishing schedule so um uh, major kudos to them their whole team has been so instrumental in making sure that this event could be the best it could be um you know and you know i can only i'm 
I'm super excited to see what the UMG qualifiers look like, you know, because it's, you know, this is open, open tournaments are a, a staple of a healthy esports environment. And the fact that we were able to leverage this and offer this to um, these, these budding players and these, these future, you know, pros and the pros that are currently in the scene is just, is awesome. Like we saw so many upsets. We saw pro teams getting knocked out. Um, we have one team that's orgless right now that is currently going to be competing next week and that's uh the slimy booger men which is such a it's a great a, a great name that's a gamer name <laughs> if i've ever seen one but we almost saw moon raccoons versus hundred yeah. thieves was this match that was like you know you have these unsigned players who gave us probably one of the best matches that like, i was on the edge of my seat i remember um <laughs> i was sitting there so we have a my to uh josiah who sits in the like he's he was sitting in the he was sitting in the uh, the game lobby and he's obviously there's a delay on stream. So I'm watching stream. He's in game and like, he'll let me know if there's something to clip. And he's like, Oh my God. Oh, no way. No. Way. I was like, dude, I was like, what, what's up? He's like, dude, you need to watch Alexander next. You have to watch Alexander. I was like, is it a good clip? And he goes, no. <laughs> yeah like, okay it's good and it was the uh it was the walk where it was where he got a 3k where he puts up the wall and he gets the you know he gets two he gets the two kills he's got two bullets left and the wall kills the last person that was the for me so far as the best play that i've seen in all of the uh the entire first strike series and you know it was like i'm screaming our, our whole chat like and that's the thing like working with a team where we're we're screaming when something awesome happens and that was an unsigned yeah. player who does this so you know not to, to ramble on too much about the operation side of it but the fact that there were so many great highlights everybody had a great time people were you know the players themselves even people who are knocked out were talking about how happy they were about the format of the qualifier and that you know it was a fair and open environment and now we have the closed qualifiers to look for next week so all the hype that was building coach myth coming in really yeah. setting the stage to <laughs> to really get things going so all i have to say is definitely you're going to want to tune in for the uh the first strike uh close qualifiers because it is going to be some of the best valorant we've seen to date hey nice plug dude i like it, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it it's so cool man I, <laughs> it's been awesome to see like valorant's uh early success you know i think riot's approach and we could talk about this a little bit later of, you know we'll get into this a little bit more so i have a lot of thoughts about this um and and i'm curious about your opinion but i think riot's approach has been pretty spot on so far you know it's like they let the scene kind of create itself um people like like nerd street come in and, and invest their time and money and effort uh into running really good tournaments and um you know and then now it's like oh as soon as riot wants to do a big tournament they go immediately to you guys you're like one of the first people they want to talk to and to to run these qualifiers and uh it's cool, man. I, I think it's it's beautiful that you know we in our industry in in competitive esports, um, which I guess is a unnecessary to say because I guess all esports are fundamentally competitive. Um, but in esports, right. you know, we're very fortunate uh, to be able to compete online virtually, um, which is why you know you mentioned like seeing these unsigned teams playing against these huge tier one organizations. Um, it's one of the most beautiful parts about esports in general, in my opinion, right? Because I mean, you you don't see that in traditional sports. You don't really see like random like teams that got put together on like the uh, on like the basketball court at the corner. You don't get to see them go play in the NBA. You know what I mean? But in esports, you get to see people by merit kind of work themselves up. And as long as you have good tournament organizers and good formats, you know they can prove themselves. It's 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 awesome. And um, yes, it's cool. I'm I'm really I'm really pumped. I was so excited, man, when they announced that you guys would be uh the Nerd Street would be running these qualifiers and these tournaments. Um, it's been cool to watch, man. I'm glad you like it. And how do you feel now, like moving into your role? Because, like I said before, you've worked a lot of roles. Um, you know, you've been tournament organizer, you've been caster, you've pretty much done everything in the book. And I think you still, you know, naturally are just sort of one of those people that will help anywhere they need to be. But how do you feel moving into your role, um, you know, specializing in social media and uh, marketing? How do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, it definitely helps me, um, you know, with a lot of the aspects of what I do, um, you know, the commentating, you know, I realize that, you know, when I'm doing the tournament coverage, it's almost like I get to commentate in a whole different way. Um, I'm covering the action on, you know, a different medium in a way that, you know, if you don't follow the action, if you're not familiar with the game, you might not be able to like I couldn't do I couldn't do this with uh, League of Legends, the with the the way people, you know, like the way you clip FPS is so. Um, it's definitely a different style of uh, social media for me, but I love it. it it's given me, it, it, it's fueled that fire. And then from the TO perspective, I mean, I still do have a little bit of a, I have a little bit of a uh, interaction with, uh, you know, doing some tournament organizing. I, I had, 
I wish I still had it within arm's reach, but I had a, I have a, a little whiteboard where I was doing some drafting uh, earlier today of like um, stuff that I would bring to Overwatch because I'm, over, I'm a huge Overwatch fan. But like when it comes of to course. Overwatch at Nerd Street, um, like I'm the person. And then that's like that's kind of like our structure right now when it comes to a lot of us at Nerd Street. Um, we're a mix of people who are non endemic and endemic. And for people who don't know what that means, um, it's a mix of people who come from within the industry and people who come from without like from who, who come from outside coming in. Um, but everybody here is like, w our number one focus is making sure that this is the best that it can, this best product that it can be. So the people who come from outside coming in, they come in with these, these skill sets and this, this, you know, background knowledge that really help people like me, um, flourish my director page is a phenomenal you know marketing director she uh came from traditional sports before this and you know she's really made it her mission to understand this product and understand you know what it takes to reach the people in our in our uh communities and one of those things and not to be a humble brain was bringing on me who understands you know esports so um I, I like to think of it this way if i you know if i left esports and i went to go work for a sofa company and i was doing social media for social, a sofa company i'm I'm not going to walk in and, you know, they're going to be like, this guy's never worked in sofas a day in his life. He doesn't even know what he's doing. Like, no, you, you take time to learn your product. You take a lot of time to learn exactly what you're doing. And with esports, I definitely am excited to see how that develops. And, you know, I couldn't be happier with the team that we have right now. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I think I think it's a good fit for you. You know, like uh, I think. uh Again, this industry, everything's so new, you know, I, I feel like we're just all trying to figure out what the format is, whether it's like in our leagues or how each scene's going to develop or how we, how do we even promote like our teams, you know, and I think we found uh, a, a really good medium with social media um, to be able to promote teams and to promote events. And um, it's something that I guess no company has ever really been built on before, you know, it's like this is only like something that's come up in the last 10 years, the prevalence of social media and really in esports, the way that we operate every day, it's only been like five years tops, you know, like. Um, feels like 20. <laughs> yeah, it feels like 20, dude. Like, <laughs> I know what you mean, man. I actually had someone who, who cut someone who came from traditional sports had said that they said, I've been working in sports for 20 years and I've been doing esports for about two. And it feels like I've been doing this for another feels 20. Like 20. Yeah. It's fast like, pace, man, <laughs> you know, I yeah, think that, yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, it's just the startup culture in general with all yeah. like that. That's what esports. if I could say, describe esports, it's startup culture. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And that's the case even with, with our company with triumph is like, you know, we're a small team of people like Nerd Street's a bit of a larger company. Obviously, you guys have a lot of physical locations in terms of like your land centers and, your, you know, um, so you guys are a much larger company than Triumph. Uh, and so you have more people involved. But like Triumph is like other than our players, of course, and our coaches, like we're five people, 10 people, you know, running like everything. And so when you're in a in the startup, you know, company situation, uh, it's like everyone kind of has to play different roles. You can't just be the social media manager. Like you, you want to find people to be a part of the organization that have like this philosophy behind what they want to do. And everyone just kind of is down to, you know, help wherever they can, you know? And I, I feel like, you know, that's probably your experience and my experience as well. And, um, yeah, dude, nerd, nerd streets work's been awesome, dude. I'm, I'm, uh, I think, uh, you know, the way you guys run tournaments, there's only two organizations that, that run tournaments for like our teams that I think are worth anything, to be honest, like it's hard to do. Um, and who's it, the other it, guy? <laughs> well, I will say, you know, I don't want to give him too much free clout. You know what I mean? At this gigantic <laughs> podcast that I have, but like, uh, there was one other tournament, you know, and again, I kind of brought this up before and we could talk about this. Like things have definitely changed during COVID. A lot of people that are used to organizing land tournaments, like nerd streets used to, um, have to, had to adapt to doing everything online. And so some companies are really good at doing it and some aren't. And one one tournament that knocked me off my feet this year actually was our, our Counter-Strike team, uh, Triumph Counter-Strike. We played in a tournament called Blast Premier. Oh. Now, Bla Blast has been around for a few years and they usually host lands in Europe. You know, they have it's, it's a huge, it's like a minor tournament. Um, and for anyone that knows Counter-Strike, minors are, I don't think the word minor does it justice because these are huge tournaments, you know. Um, and they they are the only organization I think in Counter Strike that adapted to running tournaments online and had like this incredible production quality and like smoothness. Like I've I've never had an easier time being a manager of a team in a tournament, dude. It's like they covered all our bases, man. They had like a million employees. They had like three hundred video feeds. Like they knew exactly what they're doing. It was incredible. It takes a lot of people to make that stuff happen. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy to hear that. Well, I mean, that's the reason I pushed you to say that is because, you know, tournament organizers, it sometimes can be a thankless job because, you know, as the player, like sometimes, you know, if you get knocked out, you're going to look for any excuse that you got knocked out. You know, you might blame, you know, a 9 a.m. start time, you know, <laughs> or you might blame, uh, you know, any any one of those factors. And the TO usually ends up being taking the brunt of it. But that's also the job of the tournament organizers to take the yeah. brunt of that, take the feedback. So, you know, when there are, you know, organizers out there like Blast that, you know, are doing are doing it right and i'm really happy to hear that you know they do deserve a lot more kudos than they get so you know they yeah i know they do they do a phenomenal job flashpoint their production for the last valorant event was oh my god Flashpoint's great like, too that was yeah they, their organization was great and there's just so many others that i couldn't count like you know <laughs> you would think as a, as a to or praising another to might be a little bit like you know counterintuitive but <laughs> it's important because we i mean if what if we you know it, it we at, we need every ship to stay afloat in this in this industry because if yeah. if it if there's one mono, if there's one you know monolith that that over encompasses everything there's not healthy competition there's not like you know options and we need you know I there's nothing more that that I want than to to start to get into uh, you know a bit of a contest with another organization where we're challenging each other to be the better ones to to grow and to you know to do it better next because that that's only going to help us improve that's going to help them improve and then the number the one who's going to win out of all of that is the players mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, yeah and, and really the the industry you know i mean it's wonderfully put honestly man because i always f i feel that way about other teams that we compete against so like obviously like triumph works a little bit in production you know we're probably going to run tournaments in the future and stuff like that but like our our focus has definitely been team uh building and team development and it's the same way sort of from our perspective of like I'm not going to put down other teams that are at our level just because I want us to succeed. Like I could easily say, Oh, screw this team, screw this team. But like my philosophy has been, let's bring everyone to kind of like have a mutually beneficial relationship where everybody, you know, can move forward together because the industry is still growing. So for, and it, for somebody like you um, to not just put down other tournament organizers is like, uh, I think it's, it's wise. Um, and even though we all know Nerd Street is by far the best organization running tournaments on the planet, um, it's cool to like, you know, learn and, and pick from other organizations that are doing a good job as well. And um, yeah, man, um, it's been tough this year. Yeah. I mean, I, I, like there's so much to say. I mean, in North America, we've been dealing with with COVID, you know, for how many months now? Eight, like eight months now. Um yeah, it's been rough. It's, you know, and, you know, for me, land tournaments are my passion. And I actually had to change my content plan a lot because of, uh, you know, for one, like, you know, sharing images, like you always have that fear. If I share pictures of people at land tournaments, I have to preface it with this was a year ago or this was a month ago. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, and that's that's what sucks is because, you know, one of my favorite things about social media before was photography. I'm a huge photography nerd. Um, you know, uh, being able to go and, you know, shoot photos. I think the Fusion Homestand was the my favorite event to shoot photos for because for one, um, the Fusion's, uh, you know, production team let me borrow their, uh, their, their super telephoto lens like it was like a cannon it looked, yeah it was a <laughs> like cannon a for my cannon yeah it, yeah but pretty much it was a cannon for my cannon my cannon camera of course and you know yeah i could shoot a fan from all uh, i could shoot a photo of a fan from all the way uh you know across the way and it, it looked like i was standing right in front of them and all the photos yeah. i was able to get of screaming fans and you know and then of the players themselves like player photos pop-offs like Anytime I get a pop off, like I have a, a small folder of like, you know, like players who are hugging uh, videos are always fun. I think of my favorite was an FGC tournament. Um, I've, my, you know, I didn't get it, but my coworker sent me a video of uh, a dude who won and then he uh, took out his AirPods and he slammed. He's like, let's go. And he slams the AirPods and they go off in the crowd. And he's just like, All right, ho hold on, hold on. those are expensive. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's stuff like that. This is not stuff that you see online because online you press a button. It's done. It's mute. Like, you know, we want when we want to open division it was exciting because we're all screaming we're hopping into voice channel and screaming like winning open division in real life would have been like well not that there was ever like an open division in real life but if like winning a tournament like you're jumping up you're hugging you're 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 you, you're sharing this energy in land tournaments you you know people say like video games you're stuck inside you're not doing anything it's not true land was this you know this wonderful thing i'm seeing pictures online of like people have been doing this for years um heather from team dignitas put up a photo that made me like 
way back like she it was uh from 2006 and she had her ipod with her with a white headphone you know like the ones that you have but like she had the, <laughs> that in with the old school mountain dew can the crt the logitech you know like the old yeah i, I want to say crappy because i don't know if it was crappy for the time but it was like the older logitech keyboard mouse pad like this thing looked like it like the photo like i saw it and i instantly i was like this is definitely from like 2000s like and you know but like that's how long this has been going on and like it has been a massive transition not only just for us but many organizers and many communities i think csgo being the one who got hit the worst from it yeah yeah i mean like this year it's no secret that really this last year with covid uh the covid epidemic um every industry has been affected negatively you know and and, and esports has certainly not been uh you know, been able to avoid that, that effect. Um, but we are fortunate at the very least that we're able to still do what we love to an extent, uh, virtually, you know, like, like you can't play basketball online, but you can play counter-strike online. You know, you, you know, we can still compete. We can still run tournaments. You guys have run incredible tournaments. Like I mentioned blast, you know, there are tons of organizers organizers that are able to kind of change their format a little bit and still run online tournaments. Um, and every league has been able to adjust, but like definitely like it, it feels so shitty losing this last year, losing lands and not being able to go to events um, because there's just something there that's so it's so valuable and it's so much part of the esports experience. It's like I, I do believe that in the last five years, the growth of esports has been largely in, in part uh, because of land culture and some some games like you, you mentioned CSGO, some games are totally built on land culture, you know, some games like CSGO the only tournaments that matter are the land tournaments, you know, and you, you're talking about going to a big event, like go to a CSGO major if you can. <laughs> like, I mean, these events are incredible. The energy, like you said, the energy, uh, not only as a spectator or, or as a fan, but the energy as a player, it's just totally different from playing online. Did you see like, I, I can't remember what it was. There was a CS event um, a couple months ago, man, because, you know, all these CS events had to change to being online. And, and most of the people that have been playing for 10 years professionally, they're just not having it, dude. Like nobody's happy about it. Um, it was like some team that was like a major winning team, like the best team in the world. They lost like a series to some random tier three team. And like, they're like, yeah, well, you know, it doesn't feel right. Cause we're all kicked back in our chairs, drinking diet Coke in our bedroom. Like it doesn't really feel like an event, you know? It's like, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, and I've said this before, like we did our, um, the, f the first ignition series event was very stressful because we were, you know, like I said, it was our first, um, official riot event that we were doing and you know when i say stressful like you know it's not, not nothing that our team couldn't handle but like you know you want to impress like this is our first time to really show to a publisher like that in that sense what we can do and yeah. you know even though it's like you know and, and i'm saying this in a covid you know based world obviously we've done stuff like the fusion homestand but like this was like a a very big moment for us to really show off our stuff and we finished the the, uh, the t1 ignition series invitational and you know, I was just sitting there thinking like, first off, I was like this close to cry because it was, it was like, it was such a great event. Like, and that's the thing, like, you know, when you have those emotions, like those, those great, like post event emotions, like it's, you know, you, the event staff get the same feeling that the players yeah. do of like a great satisfaction at the end of it. But like, you know, and I say like crying, like, you know, like a very like, like this is awesome like i just i can't believe like we did it like i'm so proud of my team and then like i'm thinking to myself like man like we would be getting uh, korean barbecue right now like <laughs> like yeah. that's like the big like you know anybody who works in esports like the post game is always korean barbecue and now like you know i can order it but it's not the same as going with the the squad and and exactly. going to you know that that sort of camaraderie so yeah it's rough Definitely and i rough. miss i miss land so much dude like it, it's been, it's definitely been a weird time, you know, and you have to be so adaptable. Like, yeah, it sucks. Like a couple months ago, our COD team won uh challenges, you know, we were the best team in NA and it's like so weird because we, we had to play the final series. Obviously playoffs that day was like 10 hours. It's like we're, we're gaming. Like everyone I'm in there in team speak, like we're gaming all day. We finally get to the finals match um, in a best of five and we win and like everyone's screaming and it's like, oh yeah, you know, fuck yeah. Like, you know, like the energy's there for like a second. And it's like, everybody thinks like they're so happy. And then like, once it wears down, you look around, you're like in your bedroom and you're like, it's just not the same, dude. Like, there's just something missing there, man. It like, doesn't really feel real. It feels like we're all in like this haze, man. Like we're all living this, this weird dream. 
Yeah, right. I'm, I'm hoping to change it soon. I mean, you know, I'm like telling. obviously the the signs are not looking good for the next like bigger land events soon. But I mean, I think we'll start to see more bubbles. I think we'll start to see more yeah. organizations like investing heavy heavily into these individual big events, which I think is a is a good step forward. I think Worlds went really well. Yeah. Um, I didn't get the chance to watch the finals. I tried to stay up, and I even like tweeted, "Yo, should I stay up or go to bed?" And uh, that decision <laughs> was made by the time I pressed send because I passed <laughs> the hell out. But I, I mean, I read some stuff about like, you know, like even the fans like apparently weren't like super thrilled, but I don't know if that's because the team they wanted to win didn't win or I think it was because yeah, it was because the team that they didn't want to win one. It's like they, everyone was just shocked. That's why I heard. But I don't yeah. really follow yeah. leagues. So neither, neither do I. I, I want to get into it. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like the crowds. I mean, there's so much about Matt land that's magic like that. Just, you know, I keep thinking back to that event in L.A. that I did for Overwatch. That was just something else. We uh we held the NCS Grand Finals in, in LA, and it was uh, we were running three different you know LAN events, and the uh, the Overwatch one was mine. I took ownership for that. That was like you know my baby because I was a huge Overwatch guy, and all I wanted for for this event was to give the players a great experience. Um, unfortunately, you know, not even five days before Blizzard announced a big you know fifty thousand dollar online tournament or fifteen thousand. It was something. It was a community tournament that they announced for the weekend. I think for Echo being released or some character. Um, and it sucked because it did take the wind out of my sails a little bit flying out there. The players themselves are a little disappointed because, you know, they're, you know, yeah, they have a chance to be here. I mean, the good thing is, like, you know, even though they spent money to fly out here, they're, they're competing for the same thing in a smaller smaller environment, so they'll get a better chance to get in that prize pool. But there is, it does, you know, change things. So we're up there. I'm telling everybody the rules. You know, I'm going through everything. Uh, one of the teams that was there was accused of cheating in a recent tournament. So I, uh, yeah. you know, I uh, did a little bit of a spiel, like, you know you and i both know carter so like i had talked to carter a little bit carter was telling me like you know some stuff to like look for and like he wanted to uh, you know there was some stuff that he wanted to do that unfortunately with time that i couldn't set up like you know being able to like monitor inputs and stuff but he did tell me some stuff to look for and then i you know i went on stage and i was like all right guys listen i know if you if you're gonna try and do it i know how to look for it like you know like, don't even, don't even try and toggle. Don't even try and stick it. I was like, I know all about the, the, the G pro wireless little thing. You know what I mean? Like I, I was more, you know, talk. I didn't know all that much about it, but <laughs> I figured I put up a good game, but then, you know, I did the rules and then all of a sudden one of the younger kids, like, I think it was like 16 and he's like, can we teabag? And everyone's like giggling. And I'm like thinking, I was like, you know what? I said, this is land. This isn't, this isn't open division. This isn't contenders. I said, this is, like you guys nobody people are going to be watching you there's going to be a decent people amount of people turn tuning in but the fact of the matter is you know that you're not playing for a prize pool here i was like a lot of you aren't even gonna get the prize pool you know you're you're not going to get you're not going to go to contenders you're not going to go to trials there's no benefit here other than showing your best self so i want to see people screaming i want to see crap talk i want to see people like getting out of the chairs you know getting emotional you are you are on a show right now i said when you step on that stage i want to see emotion i want to see tears i want to see hype i said it's time to put up or to shut up and the second i said that it was a totally different environment everyone got into huddles everyone's talking e even in group stages you have teams getting up screaming like let's go like it was the the greatest thing and the greatest moment for me it'll always be my favorite esports moment ever because like for one i was i got the picture that got taken of me is not like on a bloomberg article of me pouring my connects on a player yeah. but this team six guns went up against octagon which is like an upper tier three team so they, they had no business competing with octagon but you know they they were the loudest people in the room they're screaming they're hype and then like they get on stage and they're playing on stage and i swear like it just it was down to the wire one final match one final map it was on control and they beat them out and all of a sudden it was like the most like i knew that i had to do it so i grabbed the box of mike and i i dumped it on the players running down they're screaming they're jumping up and down this is a lower bracket match this isn't the finals this isn't the yeah. big this isn't the big one but the fact that a moment like that could exist there is why land and tournaments exist and why it's important. You know, the Halo Championship Series I went to, same thing. Like, you know, like you need to really, like, this is how you tap into players and this is how you tap into emotions. If you're playing online and you're like, well, why am I playing for? Just wait until there's land tournaments. You are going to, it's going to change your perspective entirely on esports. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, sorry we keep cutting out. I don't know what the problem is, but if, it's, if my, it's weird, my my internet for some reason just decided to cut yeah, out the, a second time. The, so. jer- the Jersey internet, dude, it's all good. <laughs> I mean, for for you for viewers, if you're wondering if there's like a weird cut there, it's because we just having some connection problems. But yeah, and like regards to lions, dude, like I feel you. Like I, I love that stuff, man. Like anybody that that you know has worked in esports in the last few years, like as soon as you start going to land events, especially if you're going either, I guess you go mostly when you're actually running the events. Um, but like if, you know, from my perspective, going with my team to compete, it's like a totally different thing. Like it's so different than being online. And and it's funny that you say that that story is like your favorite moment in esports, like that you would consider that your favorite moment or like your most memorable time. Uh, I think if you ask like 90% of people in esports what their favorite like time in their life was or their favorite experience was, most of them would say like some LAN event, whether they just went to view it. Maybe it's like a, a huge event, like a major or maybe like a grand finals of Overwatch League or maybe it's a local event, you know, where they're playing with their friends. It's like it's just so part of the culture. So it, it's just, just been a tough year, man. And, and the only people that are, are, you know, pulling through right now are the people that are really flexible and figuring out how to make it happen online, um, which is great. I think it's a phenomenal, you know, and I think like we have this great opportunity where like we are able to do what we can do online and and nobody's ever really had that opportunity before you know traditional sports can't thrive if like it's so hard like nba did a bubble but that's really difficult to pull off man like um and we don't you know we definitely have like the easier uh side of things or like the longer stick as it were um i want to ask you are you like a teabagging type of guy is that are you a big, <laughs> big fan of the teabag <laughs> So, I mean, so when it comes to showmanship, I'm a big fan of rivalries. I'm a big fan of like, you know, any sort of like crap talk. Um, Myth came onto our stream for first strike and, you know, his his whole little like he had his clipboard like he does this persona. It's Coach Myth. Um, and he's just like, listen, I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you what, what the game plan is. And he had a, he had a, he had 100 thieves in a trash can. And it's a game plan. He's like, you see, the T stands for trash can because that's that's what they are. They're, they're trash. And then like setting that up, setting up the stage, because here's the great thing about, you know, shit talk is. If you lose, it's so much funnier. And if you win, it makes people angry. And then yeah. all you want to do is you're setting TSM has set them themselves up to be the villain. They've done such a great job of setting themselves up to be the villain. Um, you know, people, you know, they they don't like the cockiness, which is totally fine. I think, you know, I think that's great. Um, they uh, Sentinels, them and Sentinels have this back and forth, which is, you know, if you ask TSM, there's no back and forth. If you ask Sentinels, they're, they're trying to build this hype. Uh, you know, between I know Wardell and Shazam, they're always on Twitter going at it. I listen, it, it's all about the show. It's all about like, you know, getting people to get engaged with the storylines. If there's no storylines, there's no viewership. Like I, I couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't force me to sit there and watch a tournament between two teams that are just competitive because it's, you know, like if I want to watch a good, you know, I'll play a competitive game. If I want to just watch competitive, I want to yeah. get engaged with the story. I want to be like that guy right there. I know that he could take that guy on land. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I know what you're saying it's like it's like, yeah. I, I guess I never really thought about it like that. Like uh, what you said about how if I want to see something competitive, I would just do it myself. Like I would just go play ranked or something. Like you know, give me a storyline. Like yeah. I always said that to to our players and everybody I've worked with. It's like the way you not not only like the way you represent yourself is really important. Like you have to create a brand around your team and around yourself as a player or around yourself as a coach and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, nowadays in order to be relevant or, or in order to grow um, because that storyline and like the personality behind the team and behind the players is like more important sometimes than the actual competition itself. And, uh, and, you know, we're living in a new world where, where social media is like the driver of this vehicle, man. It's like, you know, what you do for, for, the teams that you represent or the tournaments that you run is and the stuff that like we have to do for our teams. It's like, it's half the battle, man. It's like creating these interesting um, storylines to follow. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, I never miss an opportunity to make fun of a player. I'll tell you that. And like you know, <laughs> coming from a tournament organizer, it's probably not the best thing to say, but it's true. Like if you look at our social media, if a player misses a very crucial shot, I'm the first to make a meme about it. Because for one, if I'm doing that, you know, that you already made it because you're, you're like, I know that you, you, you can take it, but um, you know, let them let them get mad let them let them say because you know at the end of the day i want i want to see you come back i want to post your highlight i want to see um i want to see you come back and be the one that i'm clipping like this is insane this is the craziest thing i ever wanted to yeah do. yeah there's no free rides here at no street it's no street, <laughs> there's no fast lane there's no carpool lane it is just it is just a highway and you gotta well, get look. on yeah, I used to live in Philly, dude. I, I, I know, I know that's right, dude. I know that's right. Uh, but I guess, 
with that being said, I suppose you probably won't be getting a job in like human relations anytime soon. You probably, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that attitude really, really, uh, really scales. So listen, I mean, you, you, you have not met my HR manager cause I, like, <laughs> I, I can come to her and I'd be like, listen, he said something mean to me. It's just like, well, what'd you do? No, I'm just kidding. I love Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, maybe you don't. Yeah. yeah you're, not, you're kind of digging yourself a hole here, brother. <laughs> no, no, we, we, we're a great team. We're, we're like a family here at nursery. We all care about each other. So yeah, so we, we have good fun, but, and that's the thing about the Philly mentality and like with, with our company is that like, you know, when we, we, we say stuff like we come off a certain way like now the accent's starting to come out geez um, <laughs> but like the way that we are like it's just you know it's all in good fun it's all it, and it's never personal and there's nothing i want to see more than an amateur player like come up out of themselves and like really just move on and move forward because like you know i joke about the memes and stuff i make on social but it it's even better when i can make a like a wow this is like crazy or when i get to clip moon raccoons versus 100 thieves and i have more moon raccoons and 100 thieves clips because they're just dominating up until the last second like that's that's what i want to see and that's one of the greatest things about like running amateur esports yeah i can dig it man i respect that a lot um speaking of philly first off are you from philly or jersey can we just clear the record because you definitely sound like you're from jersey yeah i'm from jersey i'm from uh, you know i grew up in south jersey i work in the city um you know i live about 10 minutes over the bridge so i, I live in the greater philadelphia area if you ask anybody but it's the, <laughs> the greater philadelphia area being you know within any distance but anyway so i'm from south jersey i get it i'm a jersey guy you know but i still love my city i love my team go birds uh you know we were talking about reasons to follow teams i think the geographic aspect works great too because the second philadelphia fusion popped up you know i was the fa- I, there's people here in the city who don't even follow esports but the second there was a team you know that that made them a fan of esports they're just like yeah our team's better than their team you know yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and it's good that we make uh we make a uh, playoffs every year so like that's like you know that's a great way for us to kind of build that storyline and like you know also the storyline of not completing <laughs> <laughs> <The playoff. laughs> but uh, listen uh, and, uh, uh, one, one of these days we'll, we we got it we'll, we'll get it just i just please if you're if you're listening to this steve or rostin don't don't make it 20 years don't don't make me sit here wondering if it's gonna happen please <laughs> well i've got to say you know and i think it's kind of relevant because of the way that you approach like esports like i lived in philly for a while i lived there for a few months and uh I've got to say, like, out of all the cities that I, I lived in and traveled to, like, Philly is an incredible, like, Philadelphia has an incredible sports scene. Like, uh, you know, people that live in Philly are are diehards, man. Like, they have a hardcore fan scene, and I think it spills into esports. And, um, I mean, the, the thing about people from Jersey is that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Jersey doesn't really have anything going on. So <laughs> the best got- thing about the best thing about Jersey, and I, I always say this, the best thing about Jersey is that you can get the Philly in, in yeah. about 20 minutes. You can get the New York in about two hours. You exactly. In about four. So it's like the, it's the, it's the great hub, but I love, listen, I love Jersey. Jersey's great. <laughs> uh, you know, the, our, the, the, the NG gov account is the only reason why I have New Jersey in my bio because they, they've, they've done me justice. And, you know, even though they, they're a little bit favored to North Jersey, um, and governor Murphy is not my governor. As long as he says central Jersey's exists, like that's the only <laughs> issue that we collide on central Jersey does not exist, but you know, no, it, it, where you come from matters. And that's part of the, you know, the nerd street mission is that, um, we don't want, I mean, LA is great. We're building a, you know, a local host LA it's 35,000 square foot facility. It's going to have like 800 PCs in it. It's gonna be awesome, but we don't like that's, that's cool and all, but there's PCs, there's already lane cafes in, in LA, there's already places you can go. We we're like we're building. We just built a land center in Austin, Texas. We're we're building one in St. Louis. We we want to go to the spots where people might not have PC access already, because like you know, my 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 goal, and this might not be representative of everybody at the company, but I want to see a much more diverse stage in five to ten years. And the only way we're going to get there is through cultural change and then through accessibility change. You know, I want a kid who you know, there's kids out there who might be the next uh, you know Wardell who just don't have a good enough mouse and a good enough key keyboard um you know actually five, i don't know if you saw did you f- see uh booga the uh the fortnite player did that launch with uh five below 
No, I didn't see that. What's that about? Um, he has a peripheral line at Five Below now, and Five Below is our partner. Really? Um, yeah. So yeah, Five Below they're partners with us. So our what we're doing is we're building local hosts next to Five Below. So Five Below has been actually, and it's so funny to say that Five Below has been instrumental in helping build esports. But like, they we're so basically we're building local hosts next to all these different Five Belows across the U.S. And in addition to that, they partner with Buga to release a line of peripherals that are like, I think it's like eight bucks a piece. Like it's a keyboard, wow. a mouse, a headset. And, you know, at first when, you know, this was brought to me, I was thinking like, nobody, like, why would someone want to buy this stuff? And like, I saw the video of him speaking about how like kids really need, you know, like no kid should feel as if they can't compete because they don't have the right equipment it's you know it's it's very clear this isn't the top of the line stuff this isn't like you know the best keyboard in the world it's not the best mouse it's not the the best headset but the fact is it's your headset it's your equipment so like being able to go to a kid who you know really wants something to game with can have it and then like you know with us with localhost i mean they can go over to localhost and we already have like the high-end equipment but maybe they want to go home and have their own you know stuff to play with like that that to me is what what this is all about and i yeah. cannot wait to see what the pro esports scene looks like in five to ten years with more accessibility yeah. more more cultural change and more you know just improvement yeah yeah look dude i i actually think that's incredible you brought that up i don't think i've ever talked to you about this before but like <sighs> one of my main focuses personally and i'm just a guy and i don't know if i'll get the resources to do so but it is to increase this like availability of resources for people that otherwise can't um you know compete or or like you know this is a huge problem that we have that i don't think gets talked about and uh i think it's really just a matter of time until it gets fixed but uh, of accessibility you know like esports in, in general is more accessible than traditional sports for sure right because you can do it from home you can do it online you can compete online so i think we are already making you know, there's already a huge advantage uh, inherently in esports of like accessibility for everyone to be involved. Um, but definitely, like there, there's a problem. Like I come from Detroit, and in Detroit, a lot of people don't have com like computers, like at least not gaming computers. People have laptops and stuff. Everybody's got an iPhone now. Um, but you know, this is a huge problem for a lot of kids growing up in a lot of neighborhoods or in a lot of situations with their family where like they don't have the resources. And that's where land culture comes in. I mean, that's where like. If you look at like the modern Call of Duty scene, like land culture created a scene out of people without resources. Like the entire scene in Call of Duty is people that come from like, they didn't have a like a, a, a PlayStation at home. They didn't have the resources or even the good internet to compete. So they would go to lands. And that's why their entire culture is based off lands. It's a beautiful thing. And I, you know, I don't know if I talked to you about this before, but I, I actually worked with my old high school Cause I'm an old man now, Christian. I don't know if you know this, but I'm like, I'm getting up there. Okay. <laughs> Last year I, um, I got involved with my old high school, Ferndale high school, um, in Michigan, right on the border of Detroit and Ferndale. Um, if anyone's interested, they can look it up. Uh, I got in contact with, um, well, I guess I could say his name. His name's Sean Butler. He's the athletic director for that high school. And we built the esports program last year. And because, you know, obviously a lot of people that run schools, uh, college is the same thing. I know you've talked a lot about collegiate esports and the future of collegiate esports and how important it is. Uh, I think it's the same thing in, in high school. But a lot of people that run high schools, they don't even know about esports at all. So, like, I would go and talk to these different schools locally and try to get them involved. And Ferndale was a school that actually did create a program. And um, in our state, they're trying to create a huge, like, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a division of the athletic association um, to link a bunch of schools together to have like, you know, statewide competitions and stuff like that. But one of the things that, that the athletic director said to me that really hit me hard last year when I was talking to him about bringing on an esports program is he said like, you know, and I don't mean to be that guy, but like where we're from, like if you're not involved in sports, if you're not hanging out after school and like doing stuff extracurricular, like you're probably getting into trouble. And that's a small portion of people where like, if you could provide them resources to compete in, in games that they love to play, like, you know, they can create careers, they can have real jobs, they can like, you know, find like friends that are healthy for them. Like it's, it's a beautiful thing. And, and, you know, we should look to do it more. And I know that like companies like, uh, like Nerd Street is, uh, you guys are opening a new location that that's kind of like, I know you guys have many goals with your new location, your new headquarters in Philadelphia. And, and I know that you're not necessarily like the CEO of the company. So I'm not going to ask you like your vision for everything the nerd street's going to do with the location. Mm -hmm. But I know that 
one of the goals that you guys have with this new location that's going to be opening up is to provide resources to people locally in Philly. And I think that's fucking cool, man. Yeah, no, it's definitely, um, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, especially with the mannerism, because, you know, that, that word I'm very, I've been trying. It's, it's, you know, it's like a, a, a noun for me. <laughs> it's like a, <laughs> well, you're from Jersey. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but you're, 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 you're absolutely right. It, it's, you know, providing access. I mean, that's what we did with our Northern Liberties location. Like it was all about making sure that people, you know, can have an opportunity to grow and, you know, be the, the best person they can be. I mean, the, like, you know, from the, from the organizer side, I mean, turning me from a contractor who, you know, is just looking to make way into, you know, a young professional marketer is definitely something they've done for me and being able to be myself and, you know, come to, you know, be, be the person that I want to be, which, you know, not a lot of people get to say that, like, I get to be fun, like, you know, one of the, you know, and have just be myself. And like, that's the best way I could put it. And like the same thing goes with our land centers and like our accessibility. Like, you know, we want anybody to come in to feel comfortable, feel, you know, ready to jump on the path to pro to compete, or if they're not competing to be a content creator and our new facility, the block is going to, you know, on the, the bottom floor, uh, the goal is to have, uh, you know, 20,000 square foot, you know, land facility that, you know, the, so many PCs, so a stage, you know, basically this thing is going to be built for events. Like it's going to be built for, you know, players to come in and practice and, and then people to come in and actually like come and see these players play on stage. And then the rest of the facility, which is about, I think it's like 80,000 square feet that we can expand up, but um, we're going to have, you know, our offices or, you know, our international headquarters where we're, you know, we're all going to work and, you know, be able to communicate as a team. Um, I do miss that being able to work as a, as a team in an office that was, you know, part of the early parts of my, my job. So that, you know, that did help a lot, but, you know, getting back to that will be awesome. And then, you know, the different partners that we'll be bring in and then the training facilities, it's going to, it's an esports campus. So, um, there's private, um, rooms where you know teams can come in there'll be vod rooms there will be you know places where they can privately practice if a pro team comes into philly they don't necessarily want a lot of flair and a lot of uh, eyes on them they come to our facility we're under the server hub for for uh, philadelphia so yeah, you're basically cool, yeah you're getting basically zero ping when you're when you're playing there which is not something that a lot of people can say i mean the building's so big it's got its own zip code i mean that's also that's you know that's so <laughs> my mind. i don't even know how that works dude. that's so crazy <laughs> I'll, 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 that's a that's a i can explain that but it's not as exciting as it sounds but it's uh it is still cool to be able to say that but um yeah, yeah that's a conversation starter <laughs> for sure dude <laughs> but no it's just it is it's crazy to think that we went from this little land center in northern liberties to building this monolith in in philadelphia our home um i was talking to clerky from maryville about this too where you know like i said la is the, the hub for esports right now yeah you know there was this thought process where if you wanted to make an esports you had to be from la or you had to be in la um it shouldn't be that way it should be you know it should be anybody anywhere can get a job i'm lucky because nerd street popped up in my neighborhood but like even with my my expertise and my growth and you know the opportunities that i took if nerd street wasn't in my backyard and i lived in kansas i wouldn't be where i am today so yeah. you know these opportunities need to grow and you know we're we're starting it here in philadelphia and i know clerky when i was talking to clerky he feels the same way about st louis that's his town he's been working with the colleges um there so like you know the fact that someone else out there has the same belief and is doing that in their town um you know just off that i definitely want to say if you're out there listening to this and you're you know you you want to bring esports to where you you know you're at i mean for one reach out to me and i'll be more than happy to you know help you with that but start it like get started build get it started man yeah you know just build it for your community and then from there we can you know then then work on building it for the rest of the world yeah getting started is like the hardest first step no matter what you're doing in esports like and that's why i think it's interesting is like uh you do bring up um how la has kind of been like the perceived hub of esports but i really think it's because la is kind of the hub of like entertainment in general and most of these like uh you know huge billion dollar companies that are either producing these video games or producing like you know twitch uh you know all these companies even youtube i'm pretty sure everyone's in la so that just could it's like this old school thought that everything has to come from la because that's where everyone's already at but i do believe and, and i've talked to dan clerky as well you know uh, you know we've all kind of communicated at some point and i was always very interested in his passion to like make louisville sort of like an esports mecca and then I'm looking at what you guys are doing in Nerd Street. Like you're, you're, you guys are, you know, they're going to be focused on creating a mecca in Philadelphia. Um, there are companies that are creating meccas, like Envy, I think, is making a mecca in, in Dallas. 
it's like everybody like the the beautiful thing about what we do and the fact that like a lot of our work is done virtually and really everyone's work is moving towards this virtual realm because of the internet you know you can make anywhere la like we can you know if you find a group of people that are passionate about the same thing you can you can make any city like your home and and like you know, it sounds like for Nerd Street, most people that are running Nerd Street are from Philly. So it only makes sense. Like, let's make Philly the, the Mecca. You know what I mean? Let's let's this big ass, big ass building. What is it? 80,000 square feet. It's like twice as big as anything else you guys have done. And like um, put everything included in it. It's it's beautiful, man. I, I've talked to you about this before. Like you're like the, the floor plan that you guys have is just I think it's so valuable and it's 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 definitely like something that I, i'm so happy about like when you guys announced it i was like dude this is exactly what they need to be doing man the block <laughs> dude i I'm, I'm so happy to see you guys moving forward and, and i know that the company has surely had a lot of difficulty because of this year with COVID of like you know moving forward and opening on schedule i mean everyone's had this problem but I really hope that when it opens up, it goes super smoothly because it's it looks to be like awesome. I mean, you guys are doing cool shit. Like, um, provide like what was the other thing you brought up earlier is the um, you guys are going to be partnering with a foundation that helps um, like an autism yeah. foundation, right? Yeah, I was talking with you about this. Um, you know, I have to, you know, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I have to read the article to get a little bit more information. But okay. um, Jefferson Hospital, I believe, is, is you know, we're gonna they're gonna have room in there. There's a, a bunch of different partners. Uh, Comcast Lift Labs, which is like the um, Comcast, um, you know, their development studio. They're gonna be able to do some like really cool, innovative development inside of our our, our facility, um, as well as Jefferson, which I was talking about with their autism research. I mean, you know, gaming is such a great tool for working with um, individuals who have. Have issues with socializing who have issues with um doing things like making eye contact and you can use um you can use gaming and i'm not talking like your standard games but using you know the virtual environment to help you know teach these kids these tools where they might not necessarily have had another way to be engaged so um gaming is a lot more important than just competing and you know for me like accessibility goes beyond just the uh getting a pc in front of people i mean you know, I think of a lot of pe different people who might not have the cognition. I mean, my brother, you know, he's, you know, he is a brain cancer survivor. He's um, always had, you know, some issues like his, he's got a thin skull from, I believe from a seizure he had when he was young. I mean, for me, one of my, my biggest reasons for about getting into esports and trying to start my own company was I wanted to give him a job and give him, you know, security that like, you know, even if he's not doing much, he's still like making money. He feels like he's, you know, able to you know, take care of himself. So there's, you know, so many people like that who, even if it's not that, or maybe they just can't physically compete. Like, could you, I couldn't even imagine being, having like the mind of a professional player, but the body that just can't, you know, be like a, like a professional sports player, but like not have the body that can physically do what they want to do. But esports mm -hmm. gives that person the outlet to compete, gives that person the ability to, you know, show that they have this willpower, this energy, this, this mindset that they're more than just what their, their body limits them to. And that's the, the main reason why I'm so passionate about what I do at Nerd Street, because, you know, we need to get these land centers all over the U S because I never want a kid to look at a, a sports player and, you know, dream of the day that they can you know look in front of a crowd of millions and you know be proud of what they did because every kid deserves that dream every every person deserves an opportunity to do that in front of you know thousands of people so even if we can get just one person uh you know to be able to follow their dreams like that's you know that's that's my goal yeah it's a beautiful thing man it really is and i think like we have this excellent opportunity both in your lane and my lane to just like make things happen, man. And, and as long as, you know, you put the right people around yourself, I think you can succeed. And I love the work that you've been doing, bro. I really do. And, you know, <laughs> the whole purpose of this podcast is to share this kind of stuff. Like when you, when you told me about the, the autism, um, I, I uh, forgive me for not knowing the, the actual name of the program, but I'll just call it this program that the hospital is putting forward, like being involved in nerd street. Um, I mean, that's out, that's out of the box thinking. That's the kind of stuff that like we need to be, you know, figuring out and, and putting into our programs and including in, in our plans. And um, it's awesome, dude. It's been cool. It's been cool watching you run these tournaments, dude. Um, I'm a big fan of puns and buns, GG. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. I, I, I thought this was awesome. Yeah. Dude. I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like every time I could sit here and talk to you for hours, man, I feel like every time we get together, it's like I could just talk to you endlessly um, about all the things that, you know, we think about. But um, unfortunately, 
Yeah, our time is limited, but I do want to say, you know, thank you for for having me on. I mean, you know, all that stuff that I was talking about too, and you know, this is for everybody else who, obviously, you know, if you're watching this, you might be a fan of Triumph, or you might be just tuning in because it's a, uh, you know, some cool podcast you saw. But Rusto, like, you know, we we've, we've had to come up together. Like, we've been working in esports, and you know, we've dealt with a lot of people who are unsavory. We've dealt with a lot of people who didn't have good intentions or very self centered. Rusto is like the opposite of that. He's, you know, his goal has always been to care about players, care about um you know the development and accessibility and like it's funny because that you know he i remember he was telling me about this dream of building a land center that was this accessibility point for players that was you know you basically exactly what we're doing with nerd street so like when i was able to share that with him and tell him like i, I was just over the moon and like like it, it's happening and like i you know, the other thing i was like how do we get it to you how do we get you involved and how do we you know get you running your own your own local host and i'm still gonna ask that question every day to see what we can do but let's we'll see what we can do I, I, I have, I have, like first off i want to say I have a feeling that we're going to cross paths many times in this regard. But uh, <laughs> second thing I want to say is that my lawyers are on the way. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, like, this is why I want to have you on, man. Is like, I think, I think our minds are kind of like this. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't care who does it. Like, I, I mean, you guys have like nerd street as a company has taken on a monumental task with this, uh, with the block and with all the work that you guys have been doing running tournaments. And I don't care if it's me doing it, if it's triumph doing it, if someone else is doing it, like we all have to do it together dude so i'm happy about it man like i said when when it got announced dude the first thing i did what did i do christian i messaged you immediately i said dude that's fucking cool man like i'm i'm happy for you man are you gonna have an office when it opens up like a nice little corner office with a with a view of main street or what I, I don't know if i'll get my own office i might i mean i'll probably get a desk in the bullpen just because like you know i'm always running around and stuff but i mean you know i could always walk over and look at the window if i want to but you know it's I, I don't know. I, it, and that's the greatest thing is the, the mystery and working towards that. You know, I mean, working in COVID sucks because, like I said, I don't get to see my coworkers. I have a standing desk that I've never used to actually in a standing <laughs> formation because it's, uh, you know, I mean, I've been sitting at it. It's low. It's, it's, it's more ergonomic and I use it for casting, but I also haven't cast it in a minute. But, you know, there's the, it, the transition to working online has been rough, but, you know, it's 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 been good. I've definitely grown. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm excited to get back in the office and I'm excited to uh, to just work and meet with more awesome people like yourself well thank you man look I, I i love talking to you every time and uh even though you bought a lamborghini to drive 40 miles per hour uh <laughs> no i like i like the effort of buying the standing desk uh, i should probably get one to, my desk is kind of cramped to be honest but um but yeah look man uh thank you for joining us today man i, I really appreciate your time and uh i know we'll be talking soon anyway but um is there anything you want to plug before we end the show or uh you know socials or anything like that yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Puns and Buns GG. Um, and I uh, work for obviously Nerd Street Gamers. You can follow us at, you know, at Nerd Street Gamers, but it's ST. It's not actually street. Um, and then at Localhost GG, which is our uh, land center brand where you'll see uh, us as we announce more and more locations. So um, definitely give all those a follow. Give them all, you know, to check them out. And uh, Definitely. If you ever have any questions about esports in general, if you ever, you know, somebody who doesn't know what their path is or doesn't know, you know, how to get started in this industry, shoot me a DM and I'll be more than happy to chat with you and see what I can do to help you uh, start your path, because I think everybody deserves a chance in this industry. So if I can help that, I can. If not, well, I tried. <laughs> you, get, you get a pass from me, man. Uh, big fan of Nerd Street. Big fan of puns and buns. Thank you for joining today, man.